Welcome to Sadler's Honest Book Reviews. The book that I'm reviewing today, you see it right here, it's Meditations on Self-Discipline and Failure, Stoic Exercise for Mental Fitness by William Ferraiolo. Um, disclaimer from the very beginning, this is a review copy that was sent to me by the author. Um, it's it's uh, one that I, I enjoyed quite a bit. Uh, William is indeed a, a colleague of mine connected to me through the you know the Stoic community. So um, it's natural that the book came my way, but I just want everyone to know uh, some of the, the circumstances. So he asked me to provide a review of it and Sadler's Honest Book Reviews. I always uh, give you the good and the bad. Um, what I can tell you is that th there's a lot of good in this book. It's, uh, it's one that I definitely recommend getting if you're a certain type of reader and if you've got certain interests. And that's what I'll talk about next. Right, so let's talk about the structure, the style, a little bit of summary of this, this book. Um, the way it's structured is a bit old fashioned. It's divided into 30 books. Really, they could just be called chapters, um, but I understand what the point of that is. Each of them is supposed to be like a book in, in an ancient text. Each of them is divided further into some chapters, numbered, uh, usually about a paragraph or so long. And in style, I would say that this is really what we could say um, it, it's in the hortatory or the diatribe genre because each of these chapters is either, they're all addressing the reader and they're either uh, telling the reader what to do or in some cases saying things that the reader probably doesn't want to hear or explaining something but doing so in a fairly brief way. So, so it very much is uh, along the lines of, of something like a, a old-fashioned diatribe. Um, it's written, I would say, for the general to well-educated reader. It doesn't actually presuppose that you know an awful lot about Stoic philosophy in order to get something out of it, in order to understand it. And, and William actually begins the book in the preface, or the, the, the uh, introduction actually, by saying, look, um, you know, this is a bit difficult in terms of the writing, but you're just going to have to grow into it, understandably so. He says, I'm not going to uh, try to explain it as to the average 12-year-old because you're not an average 12-year-old. <laughs> so you may want to leave the book on the shelf for a few more years. I think that's a perfectly fair point. Um, what is the book really about? So, I mean, the title is Meditations on Self-Discipline and Failure. And I, I think that it's an interesting idea, the, the discussion of failure. Um, it's really an attempt to try to uh, provide a, a stoic perspective of sorts on all sorts of things in contemporary life to provide advice that might be useful to somebody. So if you're looking for something that I, I would say is, uh, at least in most respects, authentically stoic, um, and gen, you know, genuinely is the product of somebody who's read the Stoic texts, has, has assimilated them, has thought a lot about them, then I think this is a, is a good book for you. I'd, I'd recommend it. What are some of the key ideas of this book that I think will help you make a decision whether you want to get yourself a copy of it or not? So I'm going to run through these in kind of a bullet point fashion. Uh, not dwelling on them very long, but just telling you what some of the, the key themes and uh, uh, doctrines are. So it's very clear that this is uh, a book for the self-reliant or the person who wants to be talked into being self-reliant. There's a, a, a strong suspicion of politics as largely theater. This comes up in a number of places. Uh, I would say one of the key messages of the book over and over again is that we, we should toughen up, face reality, don't be weak. We should take responsibility for our vices, for the things that are wrong with us. 
and work on the virtues. I don't want to give the impression that it that it's totally uncompromising or that um, it's it's uh, you know uh, sort of writing everybody off. It, I think it meets the reader who does want to work on their their issues. One of the really interesting aspects of the book is this discussion of well, what do we do with our failures? Because we're going to be failing uh, an awful lot. I think this is totally correct about the the stoic path and about you know moral philosophy applied to life in general um, we're, we're always going to have to figure out how to pick ourselves up and and move on from our failures and what can we learn from them another key idea uh, is that um, we were given a lot of things that the stoics called externals and indifference like our our financial means right or income uh, our relationships with other people, our social status, all of those things we ought to use prudently without getting too attached to them so that we, we get very upset when things don't go our way with them. Another thing that I think is, is quite interesting is that there is a strong emphasis on appreciation and gratitude for what it is that we do have, which I think is a positive message of the book. Um, don't expect uh, or feel entitled to anything from anyone. It's taking the sort of Epictetian, what is in our power, what's not in our power, you know, focus just on what's in your power to uh, about as much of an extreme as, as it can. Um, he, um, he also talks about anger and temper and forgiveness that comes up quite, quite frequently um, the need to restrain our anger, to, to you know, realize why we lost our temper, to forgive others, not to hold grudges. And then um, I think another really interesting aspect of the book is um, he talks about getting small. And this ties in with that issue of externals. It's sort of the opposite of the bodybuilders get big. Um, the bodybuilders focus primarily just on the body, right, which is an external from the Stoic perspective. Um, William clearly is somebody who is interested in exercise and ascesis, but the idea is to get ourselves small, to pare ourselves down to the minimum. And, um, you know, to, to uh, that, in, in that way, the Stoics thought we could free ourselves. We could keep ourselves from being, as they called it, hindered, and we could concentrate on what's really valuable in life. The last theme that I want to hit on, again, a very typically orthodox Stoic idea, life is short, things are passing away, we should put things in the proper perspective so that we can, in fact, act appropriately with the, the things that we do have. I'd like to say a little bit about what I particularly liked about the book and what I think are, are some real positive aspects to it. Um, these might not be things that appeal to everybody, but, but you know, some of this has to do with our own personal characters and temperaments. So this is, this is definitely not going to be a book that everybody is going to like to read. I enjoyed it quite a bit, but I also enjoy reading Epictetus and the stories about the cynics. So this, this kind of diatribe genre uh, fits in well for me. I also really, really liked William's emphasis on uh, a lot of contemporary issues. He's, uh, he's definitely thinking out how Stoicism can apply to our own days and times. Uh, he talks a lot about the media, about contemporary politics, um, about things like terrorism and crime, uh, the, the cult of celebrity that we have, uh, about the abortion itself, about um, you know the need for meditation. There's, there's a good sort of uh, Irenaic kind of kind of approach to uh, matters of religion and 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 God. Um, he you know he, he takes the stance of well we don't really know um, and and even if God doesn't exist we can still have a, a you know a, a good moral life within this universe a valuable life. Um, I mentioned that that I think that there's some good discussion here about anger and forgiveness and also the attitude of, of gratitude. And I see those as, 
in many respects, um, sort of typical Ciceronian and, and in some respects, Seneca type of, of stuff. So it's not all straight out Epictetus. Um, I think that, that this is a fairly faithful representation of certain aspects of, of what Stoicism has to offer. On the whole, I, I think this is a, quite a good book. There are a few aspects of it that I myself uh, find problematic. I think that there are more matters of emphasis than you know total disagreements with anything. Um, I, I think that this is a good example of a type of stoicism that maybe veers more towards classical cynicism in certain respects, particularly in its disengagement from the, the political and cultural spheres. It's, it's almost dismissal of, of those. Um, there's also a discussion in there about tribalism in chapter eight that I, I myself, I, I, I find a bit out of sorts with the stoic notion of cosmopolitanism. Um, this is the sort of thing where I think you could, you could see something like this in, for example, Cicero, but even Cicero thinks that um, we, we have to you know, think in terms of the universal human race. Um, there's also a discussion in, in chapter nine about happiness that um, almost seems rather Kantian rather than Stoic, um, saying that, that happiness really isn't our goal. Um, that that living right is is our goal, and, and I mean you know for the classic Stoics, and I think for contemporary Stoics of most sorts, um, eudaimonia, living well, that's that's really happiness. That's really um, what the goal is. But you can't live well without living rightly. So I, I don't I don't think that we want to split those apart quite so much. And there is a um, you know a somewhat troubling emphasis on we have to resist violence with violence. Um, uh, William seems to, to say at certain points, uh, for example, in chapter 10 and chapter 24, that um, once somebody crosses a certain line, um, no, no holds barred for them. And, and I, this is something I need to think about a bit more. You know, how do we, how do we oppose, say, modern uh, nihilistic terrorism uh, or, or, you know, certain kinds of criminal activity um, or, you know, uh, unjust, you know, military aggression um, how do we resist these sorts of things as Stoics? I think there's, there's a lot of uh, discussion that still needs to go on. It can't just be, well, once the line is crossed, anything goes. But those are, like I said, I think more matters of, of emphasis rather than complete disagreements. Um, and so on the whole, I, I think it's a pretty good book. All right, so to sum up, uh, I would say that for most readers, I would in fact recommend this, this book, Meditations on Self-Discipline and Failure, Stoic Exercise for Mental Fitness by William Ferraiolo. Um, I think if, if you have an interest in contemporary Stoicism, uh, you may find yourself disagreeing with the tone or with, with a few of the things that he says, but, but it's a good book to have. I think it belongs on a stoic bookshelf or a virtue ethics bookshelf or a, you know, I'm going to develop myself. I don't want to say self-help, but, but self-development kind of bookshelf. Um, it may, you know, it may not appeal to, to all readers uh, for some of the reasons that, that I've mentioned. Uh, it's well written, uh, very accessible, I think, for most people. It's going to make you work somewhat, so, so it's good stoic exercise for mental fitness. Um, and I'm very happy that, that I, I got to review it. Um, it's, it's one that I'm, I'm looking forward to finding the time to, to read again down the line.